Welcome to Vintage Hollywood Archive. Everyone laughs except for me, because my entire life is a joke. It was quoted by the man who hides his grief under the veil of comedy, earns fame with his entertaining characters in Hollywood, and even makes everyone question, is death a comedy too? As we never knew you could ditch your death too, until we met him. So welcome to the storytelling of a renowned big shot, Andy Kaufman, and his fake death. Make sure to watch the video until the end, and if you're new here, don't forget to join our wonderful community by subscribing to the Vintage Hollywood Archive channel. Andy Kaufman faked his death, and you probably didn't even notice. Hollywood would never know a great comedian was needed until they found the lost gem, Mr. Andy Kaufman. He always said, I'm not good at telling jokes in my life but he never fails to make people laugh throughout his career. Playing characters like Tony Clifton was the real reason behind Kaufman's success, as he was a groundbreaking figure in the world of comedy, pushing the boundaries of what is deemed acceptable and leaving his audiences rolling on the floor. His performances were often controversial and unpredictable, leaving viewers questioning what they had just seen. Well, in simple words, let's say if comedy is an art, Kaufman was the artist. But do you know he always called himself a dance and song man? But Fate's Ball was never in his court, as the world still knew him as the greatest comedian of Hollywood. And why not call him the master of comedy? His ability to catch the essence of the king of rock and roll, while also adding his own unique spin to the performance, left audiences in awe and disbelief. Kaufman's willingness to take risks allowed him to reach people in a way few other entertainers could. His humor transcended language and cultural barriers, leaving audiences of all backgrounds laughing and reflecting on the power of laughter. But the one who makes everyone laugh is the one with the darkest heart. As no one would understand his plans and ideas as he never knew that his dream would mold him into one he always wanted. So. He was born to a Jewish family in New York City in 1949 and raised in the world-class neighborhood of Great Neck, Long Island. He was the beloved son of Janice and Stanley Kaufman. They shaped him to be what he was later in life by allowing him to pursue his dreams and challenge the normal. From a young age, Kaufman was determined to make his mark on the world and followed his own unique path. His childhood was full of creativity and exploration, as he was encouraged to express himself and pursue his passions. His upbringing shaped the unique brand of humor he became famous for, as he drew inspiration from the everyday life of his hometown to create his own style of comedy. His family's support and dedication to his craft proved invaluable in his journey to becoming one of the most influential and revered comedic minds of all time. And you won't believe it, but from a young age, Andy Kaufman was determined to make his mark on the world, and his passion for entertainment was evident from the start. From performing at birthday parties from eight to his role as Latka Gravis in Taxi, he never failed to make people laugh. As a child, he enjoyed performing for family and friends and would make up skits and plays for anyone willing to watch. As encouraged from an early age to follow his heart, whether it wished to go towards the norm or against it, can we really expect Kaufman to follow the conventional way towards his stardom? Well, it was anything but conventional. He did not follow the traditional route of comedy clubs in stand-up, or better to call him the tradition breaker, as he once again proved everyone wrong who says, you'll learn success step by step. And in just a little period, he became a household name, he found success by pushing the boundaries of what was deemed acceptable and entertaining as the main focus of Kaufman's stage routine was for sure comedy show performances, which over the years have included everything from singing the repeated folk song 99 Bottles of Beer to storybooks from The Great Gatsby. But you know what makes him more special? For sure, his unique style. As some people are one of a kind and some are marching to the beat of their own drum. Kaufman proved himself to be the latter. His brand of comedy was unlike anything seen before. 
His bold and unconventional style of comedy was a breath of fresh air for audiences worldwide. This legendary prankster had a knack for creating truly unique and memorable roles, such as his classic foreign man character on Saturday Night Live, which still lives on in pop culture today. He was a master of improvisation, often creating entire comedic skits on the spot, and his creativity and ambition were unlike anything seen before. Kaufman's unique style never fails to catch everyone's attention, whether it was his role as a foreign man, Latka, or the impersonations of Elvis Presley. His specialty in thinking outside of the box made him the true star. Not only this, but from his notorious lip-syncing of the Mighty Mouse theme song to his infamous roles as the intergender wrestling champion, Kaufman was always willing to try something new and unexpected to get a laugh. Contrary to people's opinions of him being funny, Kaufman would rather say, but I'm not trying to be funny. I just want to play with their heads. And that's what he always did, didn't he? You might want to agree with this if you heard of him inviting 2,800 audience goers to a midnight snack in the city after his act in Carnegie Hall, napping during a shot the entire time, in a sleeping bag, and even reading aloud the novel. Don't be shocked, as it was not Kaufman's first time showing his unusual side to the audience. And just as being unusual wasn't enough for us to see, Kaufman also had a secret identity. Yes, it's no joke. Kaufman was well known for his elaborate pranks and performances, but few people were aware of his secret identity. Tony Clifton was the ideal foil to the more whimsical style of comedy practiced by Kaufman, allowing him to take risks and shock his audiences. His brazen behavior and acerbic comments were all part of a masterful plan. He sought to challenge audiences' expectations to surprise them with something unexpected. And as people said, but this isn't what we expected, Kaufman replied, exactly, that's the point. I want to challenge your expectations and make you think outside the box. And that's why I'm here, to surprise you and make you laugh. So, let's get tonight's show on the road. He used his secret identity as Tony Clifton to do just that. A legacy of illusion lives on. Well, we know that fame brings us a lot of attention, making many people our friends and many of our enemies. Kaufman acting as Clifton already brought him a lot of hatred, so we cannot expect his reputation to be all good amongst the audience. He was particularly disliked by fellow comedian Michael Richards, and it was so intense that it resulted in physical confrontations on the set of the ABC comedy series Fridays. The incident began when Kaufman and Richards were set to perform a sketch together. Kaufman wanted to improvise the sketch, while Richards wanted to stick to the script. You know what? I feel stupid, was what Kaufman said during a live skit. This led to a heated argument, culminating in Richards shoving Kaufman and Kaufman retaliating by throwing a cup of water at Richards. The incident was caught on camera and broadcast on live TV, shocking viewers and cementing Kaufman's reputation as a risk-taker and innovator. Moreover, the unorthodox-natured Kaufman forced him to wrestle women and claimed himself to be the intergender wrestling champion of the world. This triggered many people around him, including Jerry Lawler. The feud between Andy Kaufman and professional wrestler Jerry Lawler was one of the most entertaining and memorable rivalries in the entertainment industry's history. It began when Kaufman challenged Lawler to a wrestling match, which Lawler accepted and took as an insult. This led to a heated argument on the set and a slap from Lawler to Kaufman. The match was a success, with Kaufman receiving a standing ovation from the audience, highlighting the power of Kaufman's willingness to take risks and challenge conventions. Since then, their feud has become legendary, with many believing it was an elaborate ruse. Whatever the truth is, the feud between Kaufman and Lawler is a classic example of two larger-than-life personalities clashing and it continues to be an inspiration to entertainers and comedians who strive to push the boundaries of comedy. With success comes rivalry, and we all need some power and back support to stay strong during the period of difficulty. Imagine Kaufman being shy during his childhood. Can we imagine a person so famous for his good and bad jokes being shy? Yes, 
That is exactly how Andy Kaufman was. Even though he was one of the biggest names in Hollywood, he still needed the confidence to overcome his fears. For this reason, transcendental meditation was what he practiced for a long time. This enabled him to overcome his fears and reservations to become an incredibly bold performer. Following this meditation, he never smoked or drank and stayed vegetarian. Well, we think that Kaufman took the inner peace guidance a little too seriously, as we still don't believe, but he was the person who stayed single forever. Yes, you heard it right. He never got married, but it doesn't mean he was a hard-to-get man. As he was rumored to have had a romantic relationship with his female wrestling opponent, he was also linked to female impersonator Robin Williams. He also had a series of high-profile relationships with actresses, including Carol Kane and his manager Lynn Margulies. Kaufman was seen as a playboy of his time, and his affairs were no exception. While some caused controversies, others were seen as a way for him to express his creativity and explore new entertainment avenues. Whatever the case, his affairs were always interesting and helped to shape his legacy as an entertainer. Having a daughter without a marriage was not a big deal for Kaufman, as he had a daughter out of wedlock with his high school girlfriend. Her name was Maria, and she was given up for adoption. She grew up to become a radiation therapist, and in her 20s, out of interest in finding her birth parents, she found Kaufman to be her father. Well, not only this, but years later, someone else also claimed to be Andy Kaufman's daughter. And guess what? This time, she was the fake daughter. As dramatic as it might sound, a 24-year-old girl appeared and claimed to be Kaufman's daughter in 2013 on stage at Manhattan's Gotham Comedy Club. She also claimed that the comedian was a stay-at-home father for her and her siblings. Too theatrical, isn't it? Hold your breath, because the fake daughter's news was bearable, but the whole world was shocked when the beloved comedian Andy Kaufman was unexpectedly banned from Saturday Night Live for life. The ban came after Kaufman's appearance on the show in 1983, when he decided to switch roles with the guest host, Bucky Henry. This led to a heated argument between Kaufman and then-executive producer Dick Ebersole, who vowed never to let him back on the show. Being a social star is not that easy, as you not only have to face the world's criticism, rumors, and gossip, but your failing health, too. So Kaufman's persistent coughing was the topic among several family members' concerns during the Thanksgiving dinner in November 1983 on Long Island. He went to the doctor and was told nothing was wrong after claiming that he had been coughing for nearly a month. He went to see a different doctor when he returned to Los Angeles, and then he went to Cedars Sinai Medical Center to have a series of tests done. After audiences were shocked because of a weak Kaufman's appearing in front of them in a performance, he agreed that he had an unspecified illness that he hoped to get cured naturally. A few weeks later, he was diagnosed with lung cancer, typically associated with smoking. Although Kaufman received palliative radiotherapy, cancer had already spread to his brain from his lungs. His last public appearance was in March 1984 at the launch of the My Breakfast with Blassie, where he looked thin due to radiation treatments that had made his hair fall out. The next day, Kaufman and Lynn Margulies flew to Baguio, where he had treatments of a pseudoscience procedure called psychic surgery. Kaufman initially stated that he felt much better and returned to the United States. However, he passed away on May 16, 1984, at age 35, at the Cedar sinai Clinic Center in Los Angeles. After passing away in 1984 from lung cancer, many people believed that Kaufman had faked his death and was still alive. Perhaps this was because of his amusing and hysterical nature that people believed that one day Kaufman would show up and tell them all that it was all an act. During his lifetime, he was heard saying he wanted to fake his own death and would come back as a shock to people. People were still waiting for this act to end and for Kaufman to show up until it was later revealed by his manager, George, who was beside Kaufman while he was being buried, that he indeed was dead. Well, can it all be part of his plan till now? Is he really going to show up? Well, as long as Andy Kaufman is concerned, we cannot imagine anything normal from him, or can we? 
He was a great comedian after all, the one who brought smiles to many faces and remains a great mystery to many minds. The memory of Andy Kaufman will live on forever, and his fake death will be remembered as one of the most creative and daring pranks ever pulled, if he is still found alive. The depths of Hollywood have always held astonishing secrets. What was Gene Arthur's dark secret? Let's find out from this video.